Statistics is fertile ground for mix-ups through oversight or intent which skew predictions and in the worst cases totally misrepresent the reality of a situation. Cherry-picking data is a classic ploy of politicians or anyone else trying to bolster their opinions or pet theories and, in elections, pollsters often fall victim to a combination of errors. In the 1948 US presidential election, three major polls predicted that Thomas Dewey, Governor of New York, would win against the incumbent, Harry Truman, and got it wrong. Among their mistakes, they stopped polling too soon and so failed to take into account the late energising effect that Truman tended to have on voters. Telephone polls also favoured Dewey because at that time only more affluent people tended to have phones and the well-off were more likely to be Dewey supporters. Samples are the lifeblood of statistics. They supply the raw data with which statisticians work. If the sample is chosen poorly, if it's biased and doesn't accurately represent the population as a whole, then the results of the statistical analysis will be flawed and misleading. Like probability, a subject to which it's closely allied, statistics can fly in the face of what intuition tells us. Take a case where you have the choice of going to one of two hospitals, A or B. You've unfortunately contracted Blog syndrome, or BS, which can be deadly, and you're trying to decide where to go to have the best chance of survival. Of the last 1,000 people with BS treated at Hospital A, 550 have lived to tell the tale, a survival rate of 55%. Of the same number with BS who were admitted to Hospital B, only 300 emerged alive for a survival rate of 30%. The choice seems obvious. You're about to head off to Hospital A when a friend who happens to know a thing or two about statistics points out a complication. BS comes in two forms, mild and severe, and you don't yet know which form you have. She shows you the breakdown of the survival rates for each hospital recently published in the Journal of BS. It turns out that regardless of whether you have the mild form or the severe form of blogs, you're better off going to Hospital B. You'd been misled because when the separate figures are combined, Hospital A seems better. The reason for this is that Hospital B admits many more patients with severe BS than Hospital A does. And even though these patients are more likely to survive in Hospital B, they still have a much lower survival rate than patients with only the mild form. This effect in which a trend that's evident when groups are considered separately but seems to disappear or even be reversed when data from the groups are combined is known as Simpson's Paradox. It's named after Edward H. Simpson, a British statistician, civil servant and former wartime codecracker at Bletchley Park, who first described it in 1951. The paradox pops up in different guises, but all have one thing in common. Connections between data that show up clearly when the data is looked at in separate groups are lost or seem to be turned around when the data are amalgamated. In 1973, officials at the University of California at Berkeley were worried. The graduate division had admitted 44% of male applicants but only 35% of female applicants. Concerned that the school might be sued for gender bias, the associate dean asked Berkeley statistician Peter Bickle to delve into the issue and see what was going on. With all the applications lumped together, there was indeed a larger fraction of men admitted than women. But a very different story emerged when Bickle and his team considered each department separately. It turned out that women tended to apply to graduate departments such as social sciences that were more difficult to enter for applicants of either sex. When this fact was taken into account, there was actually a small but statistically significant bias in favour of women. Interestingly, Bickle's analysis did point to discrimination against women, but at earlier stages in their education. 
the graduate departments at Berkeley that were easier to get into, but that women tended to avoid, were those that required students to have done more maths at undergraduate level. Bickle and his team concluded, the bias in the aggregated data stems not from any pattern of discrimination on the part of the admissions committees, but apparently from prior screening at earlier levels of the educational system. Women are shunted by their socialization and education towards fields of graduate study that are generally more crowded, less productive of completed degrees, and less well-funded, and that frequently offer poorer professional employment prospects. Simpson's paradox speaks to the fact that in statistics the connections between things can seem to shift depending on how the data is handled or grouped. It's a good reminder to us all, and researchers in particular, not to jump to conclusions about cause and effect relationships.